Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another fun lesson idea from Science Journal for Kids. Today we're going to focus on an activity from the National Agriculture in the Classroom website. It's called From Foraging to Farming and explores the human journey from hunter-gatherers to farming specialists. The activity consists of three parts that you can pick and choose from. I actually wouldn't recommend the second lesson because it's a reading activity and I couldn't find the book chapter they require anywhere for free. The first activity is an active lesson best done outside. Students are challenged to find food and water that the teacher hides around the area. There are two rounds. Inevitably, during the second round, some students will not find enough food or water to survive. There are several questions designed to facilitate a class discussion about the temporary nature of food availability. A couple of suggestions before starting this activity. Be very clear with your students about the boundaries of the search area. Also, make sure they know what acceptable behavior looks like. For example, during the second round of collecting, students may steal food or water from each other, but my guess is that you don't want them to end up wrestling in the grass. The third activity is a mapping lesson that looks at the climate characteristics of different places on Earth and challenges students to figure out where they would start farming. There's a nice worksheet to help them explore the advantages and disadvantages of farming in different places. Students can then compare their work to maps anthropologists have created showing where farming likely originated. If your students aren't used to working with maps, this lesson may take a bit longer, but the website shares some of the most important things to point out to your students about climate distributions and maps to help you out. If you want to take this lesson one step further, you can have your students compare their farming maps with maps showing where cats were first domesticated. You can find them in our article titled, Where Did Cats First Start Living with People? In this article, scientists studied the genetic diversity of thousands of cats all over the world. They found the highest diversity in the Eastern Mediterranean. This means that cats living in this area have had the longest amount of time to develop mutations indicating that domestication probably originated there. If you're looking for other articles about animal movement, check out our articles titled, Where Did South American Wild Canids Come From? or When Did Bison Arrive in North America? Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the webpage for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website, or head to Facebook to join our official community group. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.